So when you see somebody called a groomer, it's supposed to mean to you this person's a predator. That's what it means to me. That's what it should mean to most people. But the actual mechanics, the nuts and bolts of what people are using to define people that way right now are things like, do they like Legos? Do they have Funko Pops? Do they watch anime? Anywho, let's go ahead and get into the discussion because there's a thing that's been going on lately that I'm not super thrilled with. And I know that's like the core of 90% of my content, but hear me out. This one, what was the old, what was the old adage a while ago? You leftists call everyone Nazis and fascists. The words have lost their meaning. And now we're having that same conversation, but with the word groomer. But it's the other way around. Let's go ahead and get a fan art, and then we will get into the topic at hand, because there's a lot to talk about. The first fan art we have here is from Imaginary Imp. They said they've been wanting to animate more often for a while now, so they decided to take some time to sit down and do some pretty simple animation. Said this was fun to do. Maybe they'll do more like this. No promises, though. He's adorable. I love it. The next one we have is from Dean War is heck, McCoppin. Uh, first attempt at Neko Saris fan art. Yeah. And it reads, What you currently have redeemed for 50,001 channel points is war. And it is. It is wonderful. <laughs> so no, that's oh, the wrong one. Silver J, shoosh. Shoosh. And the last one we have here is interesting. Because this one is from Mathematical Cabbage. And I've seen enough work in progress sketches from Remixin and Suzu and everyone to, to know exactly what I'm looking at. Mathematical Cabbage is apparently learning how to do live 2D by making fan art. Uh, this is where I guess I have to make an announcement. Uh, for a lot of the stuff that Mathematical Cabbage has put onto the channel, uh, I did go, hey, instead of just having that submitted as fan art, I'm just going to go ahead and, and pay for that stuff, the stuff that was submitted, uh, so that it can actually, like, I don't feel bad using it for more than just fan art. Uh, we agreed to that, and Mathematical Cabbage has also agreed that when this model is done, I might also be able to pay for this model, uh, when and if it is completed. Hopefully, that ends up being at, uh, at some point, because this looks absolutely adorable, and we will see more work in progress on it later. In fact, actually, the very next fan art is the coloring done of the model. So I'll just go ahead and show that right there. It's in his fan art, uh, but I it, it is fan art that I will retroactively end up throwing money at. Uh, assuming I'll be able to afford it at that time. That's, that's the hope. Finances suck. They're tight. But in any case, it looks... Awesome. Thank you very much for everything you've put in to all of your work, Mathematical Cabbage. I can't wait to see how this turns out when it is done. As always, if you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is to do, uh, drop it into the fan art section of the Discord. And I want to thank every artist who has put in their fan art into the Discord because y'all do some amazing work. You really do. That said, let's go ahead and get into the unfortunate conversation we have to do. This was prompted because my friend Irish Swede was arguing with somebody on Twitter, and the conversation had to do, well, with this. I'll read it off for you. Uh, oh, you're an adult who's into Legos? I mean, you're just a groomer. I really think you, someone needs to look into your computer and see what kind of disgusting things you're into. All right. Let's begin with that right there. So first off, cheers to challenge. If you're new to my channel, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, if you do not agree with the things that I do or say, that's perfectly fine. Y'all are still welcome to comment down below, but I want you to tell me what your definition of a groomer is. I'll give mine here in a second, but go ahead and do that in the, in the comment section because there's there's some conversations we got to have here. I have had this accusation levied at me before, 
and I've seen it levied at tons of people for the crime of liking things. Liking things. That's it. That is functionally what the actual accusation is. A person liked something, therefore groomer. But what is this stemming from? This is an issue that's existed for a while now, but it's just now getting worse. And that's not a good thing, but let's go ahead and talk about why. Let's talk about how this issue existed before, and let's talk about what it is now. My experience with this, uh, the first time I really encountered this, was when I was dealing with the NIFB a lot more than I am now. I'm planning on dealing with them again soon, but back then I came across a person's blog called God, Guns, Guts, and Glory. And this dude, this individual, this specimen of human existence, uh, insofar as you can consider him one, saw my videos that I did on him, and they were videos that I did over live stream. Now, back then, I used to do all of my live content via face cam. Pre-recorded videos would have the avatar, and live content would have face cam. There wasn't the distinction that there is now, where live content is also uh, recorded content. It just depends on how it gets uploaded. This man, upon seeing my office, which had not only books and literature that I had read, but also had posters of various anime and had paraphernalia like Pokemon plushes and my GameCube with the uh, fold-up screen and just stuff that mattered to me. I grew up with Pokemon. It was a huge part of my childhood, and I still like it to this day, despite how the franchise has kind of sort of burned me over the years. This is likely not a thing that's going to change. Because I'm an adult, and I know the things that I like, and I'm not going to let some idiot on the internet influence whether or not I display that. It's also my home. I paid for it. I can display the things that I like around my home. But this dude, upon seeing that, told his nine-year-old daughter, this is the mark of a pedophile. This is the mark of somebody who is a predator. And of course the kid being nine years old and having most of their opinions formed by the parent and other units agreed and reinforced that. And in about what that was three years ago, maybe two and a half. I'm interested to see what it's going to be like when she's an adult and she starts spouting all of those opinions on the internet as well. Cause I sincerely doubt that that's not going to happen. People who grow up in the internet age are going to be spouting their opinions on the internet all the time. This is a awkward scenario. I wouldn't even give a flying shit about God, Gun, Guts, and Glory's kids in any way, shape, or form if he had not directly tried to tell them that I was a predator live on his channel, which doesn't seem to exist anymore. It's mostly just his blog now. Those being events that I had to deal with, I got to experience that for the first hand. I was told that I, as an individual, for liking a video game, functionally, that made me a danger to kids, somehow. There's no logic behind it. There's no... There's no A to B to C. There's just a, a Z at the end here, and we have to jump there as fast as we can. This was my experience with this, and I've had similar experiences uh, to the exact same degree, and it's almost always the same thing. Oh, look, you have X thing that I think is childish in your room. Therefore, you must want to fuck kids. When the obvious answer to something like that is, no, I don't want to fuck kids. I want to sit down and I want to enjoy video games. I want nothing to do with your snot-nosed brat. And neither do most other people. There are actual predators who do exist. And instead of using your energy on them, you are using them to call other random-ass people predators. But this is just my experience. And this is a video about more than that. I'm giving these as examples because this is the shit that I dealt with. Let's fast forward to today. 
there's a lot more conversations about trans issues than there were three years ago because there's been a lot more legislation that is aimed and targeted specifically at trans people. And a lot of that legislation is aimed at minors who may or may not be trans. The way we find that out is usually by using blockers and letting them figure it out for themselves while buying them about five years of time. Wait, what is Groomergate? Literally talking about it right now. We are talking about the concept of groomers and what they are. It is the subject matter of the video we are in right now. With there being much more legislation against trans people, there are, of course, more voices that are speaking up in favor of trans people. And with so much of the legislation targeting children and affecting them almost exclusively in some ways, a lot of the conversation about trans rights ends up focusing on minors, which then creates an awkward catch-22 where to talk about trans rights is to also talk about the rights of minors. And now you see kind of where we're going. Because this feedback loop has begun, now the conversation about trans rights on the internet cannot be divorced entirely from conversation about minors. And now we get to Groomergate. This is not an official term that's been accepted by anybody, but I figured it's probably the most fitting term for the actual conversation. Everybody who supports trans rights, and you'll see how this slippery slope slides here in a second, but everyone who talks about trans rights on the internet now is now being told or now is having to deal with people telling them that they are groomers. Now, what is a groomer? What is it? What is the definition of that? Well, let's go ahead and, and have one of those to work with before we go any further. By definition, grooming is when somebody builds a relationship, usually of trust and emotional connection, with somebody they can manipulate in order to exploit and abuse them. Typically, in fact, 99.9% .9 of the time, when we use the term, we're talking about somebody who is dealing with a minor. Let's say you have somebody who is 21 and there is somebody they are interested in who is 14 and they decide that they want this person to be with them. So they manipulate them. They build a relationship with them while they're a kid. They push buttons and get them to the point where when they hit 18 and they are legal, they are primed and ready for whatever they want to do with them. This is exploitative due to the fact that there is a massive gap in power between somebody who's been an adult for several years and somebody who is still a minor experiencing their first years in high school. This gap in power gets exploited because you're seen as the superior. You're seen as the person who's got it all figured out. You're the cool person. Much like a parent or a teacher or anybody that you look up to, this is somebody who's going to have an undue influence in your life. As such, the term we use for somebody who engages in these practices is a groomer. They are grooming a minor to be prepped and ready for when they are available legally later down the road, or sometimes still illegally, depending on the groomer. Functionally, when we call somebody a groomer, we are calling them a child predator. They are just a micro step adjacent. Does that mean that all parents can be considered groomers? No, that's not how this works. Not all parents are trying to fuck their children. So no. When we use the term groomer, we are talking about somebody who is a micro step adjacent to a child predator. This is not just somebody who is attracted to kids. This is somebody who is an actual, like they are a threat at this point, because they are actively engaging in dialogue that will get them in the pants of somebody who is, at the time they are initiating, unable to substantiate their own side in a power dynamic. So when we call somebody a groomer, it's a pretty serious thing. We're not using that term lightly, and people shouldn't use that term lightly. Same with any other term that deals with how we deal with minors, you shouldn't throw those terms around willy-nilly. They have definitions, and despite the descriptive nature of language, we still have weight on these terms. So again, when we use the term groomer, we're talking about a predator. It is nigh synonymous with it. So what happens when we get to the stage we are at today? Because in my experience, it's not just 
supporting LGBTQ people that gets you called a groomer. It's also merely having things you like that other people think are childish. And these can be things that aren't for kids at all. Somebody can like Attack on Titan and another person goes, people who like anime are groomers. These are conversations I've been seeing happen on Twitter and elsewhere for the last, dear God, last five years. And it's only getting worse now with the culture war being the clusterfuck that it is. When we start calling somebody who likes things that are, in fact, meant for adults uh, a predator because they like a thing that is exclusively only designed for adults or at least people who are very in their late teens, not children to watch. We've dumbed the term down to where it means almost nothing, but that in and of itself doesn't mean anything, because here's the thing. When I say groomer, everybody in a room still knows what I mean. Even if I've pulled a whole ass, the card says moops, and I'm using the term in a way that it it is not supported in any way, shape, or form by any actions that are being made, everybody in a given room will know what I mean when I say groomer. Which means, now we can start targeting people merely by calling them groomers. And the actual sins one has to engage in to be considered a groomer are any of the following liking things somebody arbitrarily thinks are childish or supporting lgbtq rights which again as i mapped out earlier conversations about trans rights are inadvertently linked to conversations about minors right now because of the legislation that is being written and this is a very wonderful world to live in if you're on the opposite side of the conflict. Because I want you to think of it from the position of a conservative. Let's think of this as a chess game, not as a political conversation with two sides of heated debate. Let's think of this more as a competition. If you could write legislation that would change the social zeitgeist so that your opponents had to talk more and more about kids... And your voter base happened to be incredibly receptive to language that included phrases like protect the children. Well, you might start writing that legislation irrespective of whether it's going to pass, irrespective of whether or not it's actually useful. Its usefulness ends up just being its position in the cultural zeitgeist, its ability to make people randomly call other people groomers. And when you see this being effective, when you see people on social media calling people who support LGBTQ things groomers, and those people are primarily on the left side of politics, well, isn't it wonderful that your voter base is going to immediately listen to the trigger phrase, protect the children, and the trigger word, groomer? When they start seeing a sweeping generalization of people on the left, all called groomers. This isn't the first time we've seen this. This technique has been used before, but the word that was used then was communist. Frankly, this is the same type of technique that Joe McCarthy used when several people ended up getting blacklisted, inspected by the government, and, and all kinds of terrible shit during the Red Scare. Now, we're not quite to that stage. We are in what's called the stochastic stage of this. What do I mean by that? Well, instead of sweeping legislation uh, causing people to get hit for supporting LGBTQ rights, now we have lone wolves who are going to be seeing things on social media and trying to dox people that they believe are groomers. I mean, after all, wouldn't you want to protect kids? Wouldn't you want to make sure that children are never harmed by adults so then we see people engage in lone wolf behavior where people that they respect have given them information that made them believe that random ass people on the internet are harming kids and then they go and cause trouble for those people it can be an, it can be as big as a home invasion, it can be as small as heckling on the street. It doesn't matter. The idea is it makes life hell for your opposition. Now, if you want a real example of this happening, I need only point to Pizzagate. 
quite frankly, the ability that someone like Alex Jones had to push somebody to make the decisions they needed to, to invade a random fucking pizzeria, trying to save kids from a threat that didn't exist. It's the same thing. We are seeing all the same wheels spin in the exact same way. So when you see somebody called a groomer, it's supposed to mean to you this person's a predator. That's what it means to me. That's what it should mean to most people. But the actual mechanics, the nuts and bolts of what people are using to define people that way right now are things like, do they like Legos? Do they have Funko Pops? Do they watch anime? This is one of the shoddiest psychological profiles that has ever been made in the history of profiling. I'm sorry. And there's certainly something to be said. There's certainly something to be said about states like Tennessee that have to get a shit ton of backlash before they write in an actual age limit to their new super special awesome marriage laws. But don't worry. The people they call groomers on social media are definitely the threats to kids and not the politicians that just happened to leave the age of consent out of their bill until public backlash made them write age of consent into it. Don't worry. This isn't to say that everybody on the left is pure and wonderful and amazing. No, we have assholes here on the left, too. We definitely have predators here on the left. We definitely have them. But so does the right. It's not the political affiliation that's the actual litmus test here. And it's most certainly not whether or not somebody likes fucking Legos. That's not our litmus test either. The only thing I don't have here is a solution. And I kind of hate that. Because what I want to say is there is a nice, neat, one-size-fits-all solution that will prevent everybody uh, from having to be heckled or, or having any type of inconvenience happen to them, big or small, because some rando on the internet who just happens to have a big enough following calls them a groomer, and everybody in their audience decides that they're going to go along with it instead of actually trying to ask themselves, well, hold on, what did they do to get called that? Remember, when it happened to me, my sins included, fan art had been done of me that was cartoonish, fan art had been done of me that had my character as a woman, not something that I had actually done as a channel thing at the time, and you could see anime paraphernalia in my office when I used to face cam all the time. Those were the ingredients for a person who has a following on his blog and had a daughter who he was convincing of this information that I was a predator. And it's not an isolated incident. This is a thing that happens a thousand times across comment sections, but it doesn't happen all the time with somebody with an audience. But as I said before, we've seen it happen with somebody with an audience. We've seen what happened with Pizzagate. We've seen what happened with Alex Jones. We know what happens when we get fast and loose with terms that basically mean child predator. So what are we supposed to do here? I don't know. Like I said, it's 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 an, it's a very good political catch 22 that a lot of us get stuck in to reiterate from before legislation keeps on getting made to restrict the rights of trans people. That legislation starts targeting people who are minors. Therefore, LGBTQ advocacy ends up having to focus heavily on minors. Then conservatives get to point the finger at us and say, look at how much they're talking about kids. Aren't those the groomers? Aren't those the ones dangerous to kids? And even when they start using terminology like, well, you're grooming kids to be trans, which isn't happening in 99.9% .9 of situations, or you're grooming kids to be gay, which is not a thing you can actually do, mind you. Your sexuality is not a thing that you get a whole lot of influence over. Those are still not what grooming is. They are certainly forms of manipulation, but just like a term like gaslighting, not all forms of manipulation can be evenly swapped out as far as terminology is concerned to one another. When somebody uses the term groomer, they are using it for a specific reason. My best suggestion right now 
is to make fun of these people. If somebody decides that they're going to call you a groomer and the biggest sins you have under your belt are you watched an episode of Pokemon and you liked it and you were playing it on your TV screen or some other dumb shit like that, call these people out. They're using social media as their weapon. Why not use it as your shield? Call them out. Make them define what a groomer is. I can give you an example of how this happened on my Twitter. It's a very small one, but... The tweet that I showed you all earlier, the tweet that I showed you all just a little bit ago, this one right here from Red Dog Brew, the, oh, you're an adult who's into Legos. I mean, you're just a groomer. I really think that needs somebody looks into your computer history, see what kind of disgusting things you're into. My response to them on Twitter before they privated their account. This just in adults enjoying things is all that is required to make someone a groomer. Their response, which you can't see, because they privated their account, was that it was more likely that the person who liked Legos was a groomer. I immediately responded with, oh, so we've changed the we've changed the goalpost. This began as you saying this definitely makes someone a groomer, and now you've moved it to, well, it's more likely. It can't be both. It can't be both 100% and 95%. So which is it? And you can continue to use the Socratic method from that point to dig deeper into there. I didn't get a chance to because it was at this point they privated their account. As soon as I said, you just changed your goal, you just changed what you said, they privated their account. Or blocked me. I mean, could be that too. Who knows? One or the other, I guess. The Socratic method is probably one of your best tools of defense here if you have the ability to use it effectively. Person says, you're a groomer. Ask them, why do they think that? They give a terrible example. Ask them, why does that example constitute what a groomer is? And then continue to go on and ask questions like, what is a groomer? How do we identify one? Why do you feel the way you do? Why do you think the way you think? Unfortunately, none of this is going to change the social zeitgeist. The thing about the culture war is that most of us don't have any real effect on it. We just exist and we watch it happen. You exist within a social zeitgeist unless you happen to have a large enough platform to change it on your own. The McCarthy's already have their power. They already have their ability to do this. Right now, the best things you can do if you're not a content creator with a huge platform to actually change that zeitgeist is to humiliate the people trying to weaponize this against you and others. Because it's in that humiliation that you'll probably find the best defense possible. But that's my thought. If you have any other strategies, maybe list them in the comment section below, along with those definitions that I asked for before, because again, my inkling is that most people who are using this term uh, know that when they say it into an empty hall, most people in that hall, insofar as it's an empty hall, wow, that was stupid. But most people in a room are going to immediately know what is implied by that term, regardless of the actual nuts and bolts someone's using to utilize it and how ineffective that term might be at describing the individual. Mr. Max, thank you very much for the follow. I appreciate it. And axolotls with cream, thank you very much for the hydrate. As always, everybody, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoy this content, then hit the like button, subscribe, share with your friends. If you've got people who are misusing the term groomer or you happen to be friends with a lot of morons, who knows? But as always, everybody, incident video tagline here. <laughs>